Alright, so this is episode 3 of Turbo Mustang stuff, Boosting Vlogs, I forgot what I was calling it. And uh, someone asked me to do a vlog on how a turbo system works. So that's what we are going over today. Okay, so at first glance, a turbo car, all it seems like it does is this turbo gets magically spun up and then air goes around and through an intercooler and then poof into the engine and does magic stuff, like Jeremy Clarkson says. But uh, I'm going to try to go into more detail of it than that. Okay, so a uh, uh, turbo is composed of three different parts. There's a compressor wheel, which is often ca called the cold side. There's a center shaft, and there is a exhaust wheel, or exhaust turbine. So, on the exhaust side, there's a flange down here, coming from the turbo. I mean, coming from the motor, which is which both headers meet right there. So there's the passenger side header, and there's the driver side header, and they meet right down there at the bottom of the turbo flange. And then it's, the exhaust spins the wheel and then exits through this side and travels through the downpipe out to the back of the car. And so once this wheel is spinning, that wheel is attached to the center shaft which is also attached to the compressor wheel. So the compressor wheel works opposite. Air flows in through the side, gets spun up, and then gets put out through the exit of the turbo, which mine's pointed down. And then it goes through the rest of the piping system, which is really hard to see. There's a pipe down there. And then continues over there, goes around, and then through the intercooler. And then mine travels through the fender, you can see a little bit of it there. And then up. And I have my mass airflow sensor placed after the turbo because my intake temperature sensor is part of my mass airflow sensor. And so, and for it to get good readings, it needs to be after the turbo. But I might have to redo that and have a separate intake temperature sensor in the future. And then, uh, all that compressed air from the turbo is, goes into the motor and then more air that goes in means more fuel that can go in means more power output so that's why you use a turbo so um, yeah that's just basics about turbos um, things about the intercooler are that when air passes through it it cools the fins these are the intercooler fins right here and air actually travels through these little passageways in here and will get cooled down and since colder air is denser air that means the cooler the air the more oxygen there will be because it's denser and more oxygen is what's needed for more power now another thing about turbos is they have to be cooled and lubricated in some way and in this case my turbo is cooled and lubricated from an oil feed. And so, you want your oil feed to be uh, relative to what your turbo needs. So, like, whether it be a restrictor for... I, I don't know, I hear that some people run restrictors on journal bearing turbos, some people don't. Some people run restrictors on ball bearing turbos, some people don't. just depends on what uh, works for your specific application and uh, how much oil pressure your engine provides or your oil pump provides and so I have my oil feed teed off back here from my oil pressure sensor so I can see if I'm actually getting pressure because it won't read in the dashboard if I'm not getting pressure to my turbo and so that T comes off and it follows down and goes around and into the turbo the in inlet is always on the top within 15 degrees of uh, straight up and down for best oil flow and then it lubricates everything in the center shaft all the way up until the uh, I believe the journal bearings and then that's where the turbo seals are and then um, it exits down there I have a 10 a dash 10 a n fitting this is a dash 4 a n fitting I have a dash 10 a n fitting there 
And so I believe the way you can get uh, AN fittings to uh, standard fittings is dividing the number by 16, I think. I think it's dividing whatever number it is. So 10 divided by 16, so 5 eighths. So it's a 5 eighths size hose, I believe. And then that hose flows down over and into the oil pan down there to return into the uh, oil system. And so that's how turbos lubricated and cooled. Uh, some turbos can use a water fitting or coolant fitting so you could tee off of here and then uh, cool the turbo that way and just run another line back up there. Uh, and that's another way to cool it. And so uh, another important thing about turbo systems is you must upgrade your injectors because more air, more fuel, and then to keep your injectors running at a constant pressure, you need to upgrade your fuel pump too to a uh, higher flow fuel pump. Another important part of a turbo car is monitoring your air fuel ratio and how much pressure is on your intake manifold. So what people often call a boost gauge will reference through a, either a vacuum line or digital input of how much pressure or vacuum pressure there is on your intake manifold. And so the needle will be down here in inches of mercury for uh, when you are not in boost, which boost, which up here is boost pressure. That's actual pressure on your intake manifold. So air is being forced into your intake manifold when the gauge goes up here. And that's in either PSI or sometimes you'll see it in bar, which is barometric pressure. And uh, in my case, I'll be at about 9 PSI. I don't know what that is in barometric pressure, but it's a decent amount of power for a stock block. The other thing, and stock internals, the other thing you need to monitor is your air to fuel ratio. So, I didn't cheap out, I didn't just buy the Innovate air fuel ratio because I wanted something very reliable because I want this car to last. So I bought an AEM uh, UEGO Bosch sensor fancy thing for uh, monitoring the air to fuel ratio. And uh, what this is, is how many uh, units of air versus how many units of fuel is going into the combustion chamber. And so, perfect uh, combustion at idle or cruising is 14.7, and what's most commonly, uh, the most common air to fuel ratio under acceleration is about 12 to 12.5, some people even go down to 11.5, and uh, that's, that's where you want to be. <laughs> And so over here on the gauge is running lean, over here on the gauge is running rich, and 14.7, like I said, is perfect for idle. Another crucial part to making sure that your engine survives being boosted is eliminating or repurposing your engine's PCV system. I did so by using valve cover breathers to vent any build-up pressure from the inside the crankcase to the atmosphere without letting dust and, and other particles flow back into the crankcase. And so this is very important since a stock PCV system will just suck what's in the crankcase back into the intake manifold. Yes, that is a spark plug and uh, it will just recycle the gases that way. But when you're running boost, that means pressure will then be sent from the intake manifold and into the crankcase, which is something you do not want. Every single seal in your car will be ruined. I know Rice or Miata from Haggard Garage, or previously on Haggard Garage, just had to pull his motor because he did not set up his PCV system correctly. He blew out almost every seal on his motor, and uh, including the front seal, main seal, and the rear main seal, uh, the camshaft seals, I think, uh, some intake manifold seals, probably, 
Uh, I think he had heater hoses blowing off at one time. And uh, it was all bad. So to avoid having that issue, valve cover breathers. And you want them to be pretty much at any high point in your motor because the air will be forced up from the bottom. So I have one right over there on that valve cover and I have one back there on this valve cover. And so that allows my uh, crankcase to breathe and flow. Another thing that you'll want to do when converting a naturally aspirated car to turbo is block off your EGR actually just not even block it off delete it entirely because your exhaust gas recirculation system will try to pull the exhaust gases into the intake manifold to repurpose them which is to get slightly better gas mileage and slightly lower your combustion chamber temperatures but with that system installed it makes it very difficult to spool a turbo because then it will be trying to take the exhaust gases and just put them back into the engine when we don't want that. Another thing that I've added to my turbo system is check valves. So these valves allow, allow air to flow in only one direction. So in this case, when under vacuum, air will flow into the intake manifold, but under boost, it stops air from flowing. And this goes to my charcoal canister. So I didn't want my charcoal canister being pressurized because I've I don't know, I think that would mess up something. So I did that there, and I also did it to the brake booster because I really enjoy having brakes. And I did not want to take any chance that I would mess that up. So, check valves were not really anything that was needed, but it was something I wanted just to make sure I stayed safe. This is another thing I've got installed called a blow-off valve. This is something people go absolutely crazy for when you drive by them at a car meet. So what a blow-off valve does is it has a vacuum reference, which is that hose right there, that references uh, vacuum after the throttle body. So when there's a spring inside there, which much like a wastegate, is closed when under boost, or not like a wastegate, it's actually the opposite. It's closed under boost and then when you let off the throttle, the vacuum pulls open the uh, valve and the boost that's on the inside of the intercooler pipe opens up on the valve and the air comes rushing out to the atmosphere. And this is done to prevent compressor surge, which is the compressor wheel trying to force more air in when the throttle body is closed. So it, air just builds up and sort of like buffers back and forth on the compressor wheel. And it's, it's what's referred to sometimes as turbo flutter, so it's like a... <laughs> kind of sound, if that makes sense. But that's just what a blow-off valve does. It's not really needed. But it just saves, it just helps save the life of your turbo a little bit. Another very important part of a turbo system, which I have yet to install, is the wastegate. So this is your wastegate right here. And so inside of your wastegate, there is a valve, much like an intake or exhaust valve, that's in right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's the valve right there. And attached to the valve, in this upper portion, which, if I can get it to stay, in this upper portion right here is something called a diaphragm, and it is basically just like a, uh, it's kind of like a balloon, and it's attached to the valve, and there's a spring up in the top pushing down on the valve, and so when you want to be running, let's say, 9 PSI, you put a spring in there, that's nine PS, that's a nine pound spring. So whenever, or about a nine pound spring, then you can run a boost controller to control when that spring opens so you can get nine PSI to your uh, motor. But on the bottom, that references boost pressure. On the top, references, references uh, either vacuum pressure or can be vented to the atmosphere. But uh, when you run pressure into the bottom, it pushes up on that diaphragm, 
which then opens the valve and this side on the bottom is connected before the turbo and this side is connected to the downpipe or can sometimes be vented to the atmosphere and what this does is it prevents the turbo from spooling up anymore so once a turbo spools and it reaches 9 psi like we mentioned earlier the wastegate will open and stop it from spinning any faster than it is at that moment and that's what keeps your boost at a constant pressure without this if you were to go full throttle like I did a couple weeks ago which was a terrible choice and you spin your turbo faster than you want you can do things such as pop off intercooler piping or what's even worse is blowing head gaskets bending rods floating valves even bending valves things of that nature and that is not good so you want that thing on your car if you're going to drive it hard actually you know what you want that thing on your car no matter what I made a mistake don't you do it alright I think this covers just about everything uh, there is about um, turbo systems so if you have any questions or anything that I may have missed you can leave them down in the comments alright guys so I hope you liked this little episode of uh, boosting vlogs so now you know how a turbo works and all the little parts of the system um, tune in next time for another cool video and until then like comment subscribe do whatever you want but peace Giggity.